All right, so I want to look at a problem as, as to why we use high voltage power lines to carry electricity versus using low voltage across uh, the power lines. So let's consider this little situation here. I've got a power plant which puts out 800 kilowatts. That electricity is carried along copper wires. Copper wires go all the way to your home. In the high voltage case, there's probably a transformer or a series of transformer. We're just gonna consider one that steps down the voltage so it makes it 120 once it gets to your home. And again, that's RMS value. So let's consider the comparison between low voltage carried across this line versus high voltage and see how much energy is dissipated in each case. If there's energy dissipated, that means there is a resistance. And let's say I'm talking about only the resistance of the wire, which is a conductor. However, the length is pretty long. So let's just give it a nominal value of say 12 ohms. All right, so in the low voltage case, versus the high voltage case. Let's calculate what our current is. Now I have to tell you what the low voltage case is. For low voltage case, let's just consider VRMS to be equal to 120 all the way across. And for the high voltage case, let's consider 48 kilovolts or 48,000 volts. All right, the next thing we need is we need to know how much current, what is the RMS current in this case? However, we do know that the power is equal to RMS current multiplied by RMS voltage. So at the end of the day, my RMS current for this case is simply going to be the power. That's our 800 kilovolts divided by the RMS voltage, which for the low voltage case is 120. I substitute that in the calculator. I think I get 6,667 amps. That's a lot of current. All right, how about in the high voltage case? In the high voltage case, my current, RMS current, again, it's the power, 800,000. Except this time I divide by a high voltage. So my current's a lot smaller in this case. It's only 17 amps. All right, now in each one of these cases, I want to calculate how much power is dissipated in this resistor. All right, so what's the power dissipated in a resistor? Again, it's, you know, the value of the resistance, we know the RMS current, it's RMS squared, multiplied by the resistance. In this case, you notice the current gets squared here. So the amount of energy that's dissipated every second is going to be very, very big. You punch in the numbers, what you end up getting is 530 megawatts. Now keep that in mind, our power plant only puts out 800 kilowatts. So forget about it. All the energy would be dissipated as heat. All right, this number is bigger than the total output of the power plant. So you're not very successful in transmitting power to the home in this particular situation. How about in the high voltage case? The power dissipated, again, it's Ri squared. And we're looking at RMS values. So what do we get? Our resistance is 12 ohms and 17. You could square that value. At the end of the day, I think I got 3.3 .3 kilowatts. Okay, now you compare that to the total output. All right, you look at how much energy or what percentage of that energy is wasted or it's converted into heat. It's 3.3 kilowatts divided by 800 kilowatts. So only a small fraction. This percentage is only about 0.42. That's not too bad. That's the power loss compared to the total power output of the power plant. So we've, we're pretty successful in transmitting energy or transmitting electricity at high voltages versus low voltages. Okay.
better to keep the current as low as possible. Again, because the energy dissipated comes in as I squared. All right, and the second part of this question is, well, again, although we we found that we have less power loss if we're using high voltage, once it gets to the home, we only want 120. So we're going to need a transformer in order to step down the voltage. Because we have 48,000 volts going in, and we only want 120 going out. So again, our transformer equation now is with the voltage going in, divided by the number of turns for the primary coil equals to the voltage going out, which is going to be 120, multiplied by the number of turns in the secondary coil. So let's imagine we have 10,000 turns here in the primary coil. How many coils would we have on the secondary coil? Well, you simply have to solve this equation for N2. So N2 is simply equal to N1 voltage 2 divided by voltage 1. So this becomes 10,000 multiplied. E2 is 120 divided by E1. That was our voltage on the power line. Again, in this simple example, let's just take 48,000. Um, you do the math, you get N2 is approximately 25 turns. So that'll step down the voltage as we don't want to put. <laughs> 48,000 volts uh, in your home, that would be <laughs> catastrophic. So if we use just the transformer from 10,000 to 25 turns, uh, that should do the job.